All right, so in this video, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at uh, set driver, set driven, uh, one of the built in expressions uh, in Cinema 4D. And really, um, it's an introduction or allows you to start exploring the basics of Expresso uh, and taking that a bit further, even um, custom user data, which can be very helpful. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, I'll come back to the more advanced uh, settings I have here. Uh, momentarily. But if you just want to know how to set something up like this, if you just create two objects, so I, let's say I have a cube. Let's hide this slide as well for right now. Um, which makes it really hard to see the cube. And so that must be the dome lights. Handiwork. There we go. So I have a cube and I'll create a second object like a, a capsule. And if I want one property to control another, um, say, the X position of the capsule to drive the rotation of the cube. I don't know why you would want to do this, but if you did, then what you need to do is on the property you want to control, or, or I'm sorry, to do the controlling, right click, go expressions and choose set driver. And then on the one you want it to control, you right click on it, go to expressions and choose set driven. Now you have two options here, absolute and relative. Absolute means whatever value is um, in the control one is going to be the value that is in um, the driven one. Uh, whereas relative will try and keep any um, spacing uh, there or keep the values as they currently are. So it's absolute versus relative. So um, I'll do expressions and I'll do relative, although it really shouldn't have mattered for this particular example. Uh, so now when I move this object, the capsule along the X axis, you now see the um, cube rotating, right? And so this is now the same as that. Now, uh, rotation can be a bit tricky. Um, I think we're, we're running into a radians uh, to degrees conversion issue. Um, so I think if we were to take this and multiply it by 3.14, that's what we would get. Uh, but aside from that, that is exactly what we're seeing. Now, this can be used for creating more complex setups um, something commonly known as a, a rig. Um, and rigs are something, you know, setups that I would use personally if it was going to be something I was going to reuse um, often if I was going to be giving it to somebody else to animate. Okay, so let's see how we can do this here in a couple of different ways. Um, now what I'm going to do is first create a null because I also want to talk about user data a little bit. So I'm going to say this is our control. So that way I could give this to somebody um, and while it's not terribly complex, I can give them um, a very easy place to find uh, perhaps certain things like the intensity of the light, the color of the light, maybe even the scale of those. Okay, so on my controls, I can come here to user data and choose add. And what we'll see on the left hand side is all the different um, user data that have currently been created. And at this point, it's just kind of this first one. Um, and we can go through and create these, um, save them, load them, whatever. On the right-hand side here, we have its property, okay? And so really what we're doing is defining a property or something that will show up in our attribute manager that we can control, we can keyframe, whatever we need to do. So let me just say this is light color for the name. Now we'll also update the short name, which um, if you want to use something different, if you're going to do something more advanced with Expresso, um, using a different short name can be helpful. Okay, we can decide whether we want them animatable. And then the big thing here, um, one of the big things is what type of data do we want it to use? And as you can see, there are a lot of different types of data. And believe it or not, you've probably seen most of these without really realizing it. So a float, in this case is a percent. Um, integers are just going to be whole numbers. Um, vectors are going to be something for like x, y, and z, or rotation values or scale values. Um, so there's a lot of different, you know, options here, color, um, file names, fonts, gradients, you name it. All right. I actually think this has, has grown quite a bit in recent years. Um, but for our purposes, for the light color, I want this to just be a color. And what do you know? There it is. There's this default. Um, well, we're seeing what the default value is, but we're seeing our color swatch, which we can then go in and define. So that is one piece of user data. Um, I'm going to click add to add another. Let's do light intensity. OK, 
Okay. Same type of thing. Um, you know, we might even have uh, a light intensity type of um, control here. Let's see. I mean, lens glow is pretty close, but typically what we could do um, is just choose something like a float, perhaps even an integer. Now with um, these different data types, you do get different options here. You know, for instance, even in the, um, uh, if I set this to integer, I can choose uh, different interfaces. So whether I want to have a slider with this, if I just want the number there, um, radio buttons, which I'm not really seeing the preview of them there because I looks like I would have to define it, which I don't want to do. Um, so definitely some other options, some more advanced ones there, but typically integer, integer slider are going to be kind of what we're most used to here. I can set a minimum and maximum value to what this can go to. All right. And while you may have seen that you can adjust sliders um, above or beyond their values here, uh, if limit is turned on, you will not be able to do so. Uh, you can also set minimum maximums for the slider. That looks pretty good to me. So light intensity looks good. And the last thing I'll do is in the last data type here, we're going to call this like line size for that. Okay. And once again, probably just go with integer. It's probably the one um, I use most. And I do like having a slider there. Um, I think it's just a very easy way where I can just kind of use the slider while looking at whatever it is in my perspective view to kind of get the desired result. And I can pretty much leave these the same. So now on our controls null, if we go into user data, we have these different properties we've created. Okay. But even though we've created these properties, we haven't connected them to anything. So it doesn't matter what I do there. Okay. And we can connect these up using that set driver, set driven, um, uh, expression that we saw previously. So on my light color, I go to expressions, go set driver, go to my area light here, find the color, right click back to expressions and do set driven. And once again, absolute and relative for this, I am going to want absolute. I want those colors to be the same. And then what actually gets created here is an expresso tag. And typically you don't want the expresso tags directly on objects like that, you may want it like on the null. Um, we should be able to move it, but if we have any problems, we'll just kind of move it back. Um, but now what you'll see is if I come in here to my light color and adjust this, um, we should see it change the color here. And in fact, it looks like um, it broke it because uh, I moved it. So really what I could do is kind of come in here uh, and fix this, but to keep things simple, I'll just undo it. So that way we don't have to see that quite yet. Um, because now when I come in here um, and adjust the color, we can see that's exactly what it's doing. So I could set it to say a yellow. And we could use that same concept for the light intensity. Okay, find the, or on our controls here, right click on the intensity, do expressions, do set driver, find our area light, find the intensity, right click, back to expressions again, and choose um, these again. And this time I may want to choose relative. Okay. I probably still would want absolute. Um, but let's actually, we'll save the um, relative for the next example. So let's do set driven absolute here. Once again, goes to the default value of our controls. That's why those default values are important. But now I can come in here and adjust the intensity using this user data. Okay. So that's looking pretty good. And, you know, once again, big part of this is to make um, the scene, you know, easier to work with. So perhaps I could hand this off to um, somebody who's not quite as familiar with Cinema 4D and they could very quickly find this controls null and I could color it, change the icon, you know, do some more interesting things with it in the basic tab to make it easier uh, to see, easier to find. Um, but yeah, that way all, the only thing they need to do is just find this and they can work with these properties like color intensity. And you can keyframe these as well. So even though the icons kind of change here, um, they are still keyframable. Lastly, we have the line size. And that is going to be um, the, uh, not the cube, but the cloners Z scale here. And this is a little bit of a weird one. Okay. But just to make our lives easier, we're going to do it this way. And from here, 
going to be the same thing. It's going to start the same. I'm going to right click on line size. I'm going to go to expressions, choose set driver, go to my cloner, um, find that scale property I want, right click, go to expressions and do set driven. This time I will do relative and that will allow it to keep its original value. And we did get another Expresso tag. And that's another reason why you want to be careful of these so you don't end up with all these different Expresso tags. Because as you'll see, they're really just containers and you can do multiple things with Expresso uh, inside of one. So let's go ahead and see a little bit of Expresso here. And you can open up the Expresso window just by double clicking on the Expresso tag. And if you've ever worked with the Redshift shader graph, uh, this may look a bit familiar to you. Um, and in fact, this is you know what it was based off of, the um, uh, Expresso editor here. And so here's what we have when we uh, use a set driver, set driven expression, okay? Um, on the left-hand side is the object we decided that was gonna be the driver, in this case, the controls. Um, we have a range mapper, which I will come back to in a second. And then we have our cloner, the one we said set driven, um, on the right hand side here. Now, with these types of nodes in Expresso, you have inputs on the left. And typically, there's, these are anything you would find in the Attribute Manager. Outputs on the right, which for the most part are the same thing, should be just about everything you would find in the Attribute Manager. There, there is a little bit more here. Okay. Uh, we have this range mapper, and this range mapper only comes into play. Um, if when you're using set driver, set driven, you choose relative. If you choose absolute, what's happening is Cinema 4D is taking um, the property you defined as the driver and connecting it directly to the driven property. And that can work for us because in our controls, we can come up here and adjust the line size. And there we go. And if we had set our default value correctly or to one, then this is exactly um, all we needed to do. But I wanted to talk about the range mapper here, so we didn't do it that way. Now, the range mapper can be quite involved, can be a bit confusing. Um, just like we saw with user data, um, it does have a couple of options for the type of data you are using it, as well as the range, okay? Um, the biggest thing for us, though, is going to be um, the inputs uh, and the output. So the input lower, are going to be the values that are defined on the set driven property. Okay. In this case, the, the line size. And when I was setting up that user data, I chose zero to 100. Now, when we connected it to the Z scale, so when I did this, we chose relative. And so it said, okay, well, relative, the Z scale on the cloner was originally at one. Okay. And since this goes from zero to 100, um, we will have this go from 1 to 101. And Cinema 4D kind of does the math, does the calculations, because these values don't have to be, you know, the exact same number apart. This could go from like 5 to 20, okay, depending on the type of property you use and, and what, how you connect it. Um, and so now when I come back into my controls and adjust the line size, it's still going to do something. Um, but Cinema 4D is actually handling kind of the conversion of how 0 to 20 uh, or 0 to 100 translates to five to 20. Okay, now I actually don't want that. I think the one to 101 was just fine for our purposes today. Oops. And I can take that back down to zero. Since zero was the default property here, and we told Cinema 4D when we did set driver, set driven, to correspond that to a value of one there. So it's pretty, pretty straightforward um, with this example. Now, a little bit more about Expresso. This isn't, you know, a big Expresso tutorial, um, but I just want to make sure we kind of understand the basics because um, you don't have to do set driver, set driven. Uh, it is really just uh, a way of, I'm not even sure speeding up this process, but if I wanted to connect everything inside of here, um, like let's say I wanted to do, um, we'll do at least one of the light things, okay? I can drag in whatever node I want. So I could do the controls node. It's already here though. So there's really no need to do that. Okay. And then drag in what I want to connect it to. Okay. Now remember with the area light, um, we, on our controls, we connected both the light intensity and light color. And if you look in the controls here, 
um, and the outputs. There's a lot going on here, you know, um, way more uh, than I was planning on going over, but uh, you can see your coordinates, um, your object properties. And at the very bottom here, we have user data. So I could choose a light color and just choose the generic light color, though you could even break it down by individual channels if you were so inclined. Okay, so light color, I can resize this so we can see that full name. And I'm gonna connect that to my area lights input and make sure I find the color there. Okay, now these can be organized quite weirdly. You know, there's a lot of the same properties here. So you have to be a bit careful. Um, but a little bit of experimentation and you can figure it out. So now we've kind of connected this ourselves without using the set driver set driven. And once again, if I change this color, we should see it. Okay. So not hundred percent certain why we're not, but that is kind of the basics and what we should be seeing. And I'm not seeing it connected here. Interesting. And we would repeat that process for, um, the, uh, light intensity as well this way. Okay. And that is going to do it. That is, you know, some of the basics of working with Expresso as well as, um, you know, a look at that set driver, set driven. There are a bunch of different uses for it. Um, you know, really, like I said, I will only kind of dive into that if I know it's something that I'm going to use often, I'm going to use a lot, uh, or I'm going to be handing off to somebody who, who may not, you know, be very familiar when it comes to setting something up like that. So that's all I got in this video. Um, hope you liked it. If there's anything else you would like to see, please let me know.